Welcome back to the Inside MMA Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. We are interviewing the legendary Matt Steamroller Frivola. Matt Steamroller Frivola is a fighter out of Long Island, New York. He fights under the Longo and Weidman MMA team. That is Ray Longo and Matt Sarah are his coaches, respectively, for MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. Matt is a lightweight in the UFC. He is 8-2-1 as a pro, and he has an amazing story, an amazing come-up story, and he kind of outlines this in the podcast that you're about to hear. Please welcome Matt Frivola to the Inside MMA podcast and enjoy the show. Where did you, when did you start martial arts? And if you want to start before then, you can, if you want to go even farther back. Really, I want to say I was like, I was like four or five years old and I started doing Taekwondo back in the day. Really? Yeah. So I did, I did like, like probably like three or four years of Taekwondo when I was real young, you know, shout out Chris Gates Taekwondo in Greenlawn, New York. Um, you know, we, we, we had fun back then, you know, I think it definitely instilled like that discipline and, and, uh, you know, broke some boards, had some fun. And I, I actually did me and my brother did one, uh, like uh like taekwondo competition back in the day so really you know that, that, that's like the first the first thing i ever did was taekwondo but then uh growing up i just started playing sports you know we played baseball uh growing up uh and then you know middle school came started playing football wrestling uh playing lacrosse um and high school came and just still playing playing sports all i was i'm always an athlete you know and a competitor at heart um and then uh you know wrestling really really transformed me though uh you know when i was in middle school i was like just a kind of little chubby kid and then i started wrestling and that that really transformed me and and taught me about hard work you know you know the old dan gable quote like once once you've wrestled everything else is easy so it's like I really learned that that hard work in the HF wrestling room and uh and playing football loved it playing lacrosse loved it and then I went to uh junior college and I played uh, a little football and a little lacrosse in junior college and uh I played that for like a year and then after that um I stopped kind of playing that and I I missed like the competitiveness and um I was in the college dorms messing around with one of my buddies and he was like this little skinny kid. And I was like a tough, you know, football player, like wrestler. And we were just messing around in the dorm rooms and like, I, I shoot like a takedown on him and he's this little skinny kid and he just wraps up my neck, puts me in a guillotine and like puts me Ooh. to sleep. And I'm like, what did you just do to me? <laughs> and then like the next day you know, I went home and, and I went to Matt Sarah's gym and started doing uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Damn. So yeah. wait. So I feel like that's such a classic how I got into jujitsu story. So you were in college when you got into jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. I, I started jujitsu when I was uh around like nineteen or twenty around there, but you know, I had that wrestling background and was an athlete and ha- had that little bit of taekwondo as well. Cause then, you know, I started doing jujitsu uh with Matt Sarah and all those guys. And then I, I moved down to uh, Tampa, Florida. I, I went to, I transferred to University of Tampa. And when I went down there, I found uh, Matt Arroyo, who was on the Ultimate Fighter season with Matt Sarah. So they kind of hooked me up with him. And when I went to his gym, they had uh, a bunch of like amateur fighters. And, uh, and I remember uh, the first day I, I show up at Matt Arroyo's gym. And uh, just the coincidence, uh, it was actually Billy Quarantillo's first day there too. Yeah. So it was kind of it was kind of random, you know, and and oh, I remember. Oh, me, that's crazy. Yeah, it was both our first days. We we both moved down to uh, Tampa, you know. I never knew him before, but I met him at, at the gym, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's my first day. I'm from New York." He's like, "Oh wow, I just moved down from New York too." So then we kind of hit it off, and uh, and I remember uh, they had these they had amateur fighters who needed sparring partners, and uh, Arroyo kind of looks at us, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know, like." I, I, I'll, I'll do it. So, and then he just gave me a pair of MMA gloves and a pair of shin guards. 
kind of just threw us into the wolves and uh we were just we were sparring their amateur fighters down there and then uh you know eventually Matt Arroyo really taught me uh you know what it takes to be an MMA fighter what a fight camp is you know uh you know eight week fight camp what a weight cut is and I, I kind of went through uh the motions with their fighters and I just did the whole fight camp with these guys uh, and I wasn't fighting at the time, but I was just doing everything that they were doing. And uh, eventually I started, you know, after I did that fight camp, I started getting fights of my own. Yeah. So a few questions before we proceed. One, I just started Taekwondo, so I'm, I've got a soft spot for it. Do you feel like I feel like it gets kind of a lot of flack in, in MMA? I just have been seeing that online. Do you feel like it applies at all for your fighting style? Like what the striking, the kicking you learned in Taekwondo? Yeah. You know, I always say when I, when I started training, uh, you know, MMA and I started, uh, you know, sparring those amateurs back in the day, my kicks just came natural. I loved kicking people and everything just, and then I remember thinking like, well, you know, I did do Taekwondo when I was little and I think that a little bit of base, uh, you know, helped my kicks and, and, I, you know, I just think it helps with martial arts and discipline and, you know, direction and, you know, and it's good stuff. Yeah. And then jujitsu, when the guy, when your roommate, he put you in a guillotine, you said? Yeah. So what about, and he actually put you to sleep, like for real? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't even know what the UFC was. <laughs> so... <laughs> So what about that experience made you want to join? Dude, I was just amazed that this like skinny kid, uh, you know, he beat me and I was, and I didn't know what he did. And, and, uh, and I, I wanted to learn. I just, you know, I woke up and I, and I was like, I just needed to learn what he, what he did. That's yeah. So like, was it just kind of like the, the inner fighter in you was like, I need to learn. This looks like magical, like, or something like something like that. Oh yeah. It's the, the competitor in me, the martial artist in me. And, and then I, I remember when I first started jujitsu and like learning these submissions, I would always like grab my buddies and be like, yo, like, let me, I got to show you this like cool thing I learned. And I'm just like showing them these guys, like my buddies, all these cool submissions I learned. It was like kid in a candy store. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm in that phase right now with, with taekwondo and getting into i mean it's obviously different but i know how you feel yeah um yeah. so you did i did some research you did rotc right yeah in florida what was that yeah it was when i was going to university of tampa i did the army rotc and then once i graduated i i commissioned as a as a lieutenant in the army reserves wow so what is that reserves is that you're like full-time in the army uh, no, it was like part time in the army, and uh, I went to uh, Fort Leonard Wood and did uh, about four or five months of uh, military police training, and that was my branch was military police, and then uh, I I went back home and uh, I joined my unit uh, in Long Island, and I I would drill with my unit uh, one week and a month, and then uh, two weeks in the summer. Okay, yeah, my brother was thinking about getting into that. So, what was your plan there, like? Did you, you know, think about fighting then? I did. When I, I mean, I, I was doing the ROTC when I was in college. And when I was in college, I was fighting amateur. So I was, you know, I was going to school. I was fighting amateur. I was doing the ROTC. So I was staying busy down there. And uh, I was studying in college. I got a criminology degree. So, I mean, that was always, that was always an option for me, you know, to do police work or, you know, try to be uh, uh, active duty in the army. Um, but, you know, my, my passion was fighting, was, was training. And that was always my, my number one was to do what I'm doing. But I always, I always had that option to go active duty or to pursue a career in law enforcement. But, uh, you know, luckily the UFC is still uh, going strong. You know, my, I'm keeping my dream alive. Facts. Yeah. So that makes, I feel like the army thing is on brand for you because you're such a hard work i've seen you work out like it's insane there's a video on my instagram of it um but from right before your last fight yeah um yeah. but you 
you went eight and zero as an amateur, right? Yeah, uh, nine and zero. I had eight eight amateur MMA and I had one amateur Muay Thai. Oh, that's sick. Okay, I want to learn. I want to hear more about the Muay Thai. But how did you get into? I mean, I'm. Sh- it was from uh, Arroyo. He did he get you into amateur fights? Yeah, yeah, yep. I got all my amateur fights down in uh, down in Tampa. Well, I had I got to go to Costa Rica twice as an amateur, which was real cool. Um, Costa Rican amateur champ. <laughs> oh, for, but, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was really the first thing I got out of fighting was a as an amateur was a free trip to Costa Rica. Um, but yeah, all my amateur was down in uh, Tampa under Arroyo, but then I would still come home for Christmases and come home for uh, summers and uh, work with Longo and work with Sarah. Okay. The, my, that was going to be my next question with, with like Matt and Ray. Did they, they're so well known in, in the UFC. Like they're, I'm sure that was an insane connection. Did they help you kind of get on the radar when they saw you doing so well as an amateur? Or was um, it more a royal? You know, like how does how does that work? I'm just curious. Like I said, you know, I was I was down in Tampa and, and Arroyo was my was my guy down there, really guiding my my fighting career. But uh and then I would come I would come home for Christmases and, and summers, you know, in between uh while I was going to school and I would train with Ray, I'd train with uh Sarah, everyone there, um, you know, all throughout my amateurs and even the beginning of my pro career and and I, I officially moved back home to Long Island about about five five or six years ago. And when I moved back five or six years ago, that's when, you know, Ray and Matt really took took the took the lead uh, as my coaches. And I really always still involved. You know, he's he's a great guy, great coach, and and uh, he's been with me since the beginning, and he'll be with me till the end. But you know, having having Ray and uh and sarah and you know everyone at law mma and everyone at sarah bjj you know to train with and to help me you know it gives me all the confidence in the world oh yeah i could imagine it's such a like the first time i i went to law the first time uh when i was filming with manimal like two octobers ago and just the environment there is like crazy inspiring in a way it's oh, like yeah. all these dudes working their asses off yeah i love law law's like a real gritty fighter's gym it's uh like you walk in there and you could just tell like champions are being bred there i love it manimal has a quote where uh he's like if you if you just open the door at law a top five or a top 10 fighter falls out like it's just <laughs> crawling with like yeah meat. it is and uh... even at sarah's there's like top jujitsu guys Oh, Sarah's there's nothing but sharks on the mats. It's it's insane. Yeah, these guys go get after it. So like you get noticed by Dana well, I don't know if it was Dana. Some somehow you get into the contender series. What was that like? Getting into it. It was it was it was good. You know, like I said, you know, I had a, a great amateur career and uh, you know, I graduated from college, I got a criminology degree. And then I, I had to go to Missouri for the army for like five months. And that was like a real test, you know, like I was, I graduated, you know, I had a degree and I was going away for the army and, um, and I actually found a gym out there in Missouri to train at while I was going out there, you know, which was cool. So I was staying, I was staying busy, you know, I was, I was focused on my uh, military police training. Um, but I always, you know, I was making sure that I was, I was getting jujitsu in, you know, a couple times a week. I was still, uh, you know, getting my bag work in. They had a bag at Fort Leonard Wood that I just beat up that bag. Uh, you know, I stay, I was staying focused out there. And then once I finished uh, out in Fort Leonard Wood, I came back and uh, I was ready to go pro. And I, I actually went back to Tampa. I was still, I went after that, and uh, I went pro and um, I won my first fight. Uh, I had an arm bar in the first round. It was great. And then I, I had my second fight and, uh, and I won my second fight and I broke my hand, my second fight, um, for the first time. So that kind of set me back. But, uh, and then after, after my second pro fight, I actually, uh, like, like did, uh, uh, a dream of mine that since I started training, 
I went out to Thailand uh, for for almost like two months. I was out there, and uh, I was two and like I was two and I was a pro, and and I kind of I went out to Bangkok. I was in Bangkok for a month, and and I I went right into a Muay Thai uh, training camp in Bangkok. It was no MMA. It was just straight Muay Thai, and I kind of like got engulfed in the culture of of Thailand and of Muay Thai, and uh, it was it was a game changer. You know, I always, if you watch like Dragon Ball Z, I always say it was like, going, I was like in a hyperbolic time chamber of, of my training out there, you know, just training twice a day with these ties who've been doing it for their entire lives. And, uh, it was, it, I, I knew nobody out there. It was, I went alone. Um, it was so cool. And then the last two weeks we went to, uh, Phuket, uh, and I went to like the famous tiger Muay Thai, and and then when I was out in Phuket, I had, you know, some of my family, my my wife, my dad, my brother, his fiance all came out and and I got a fight in uh, a Muay Thai fight in Phuket, which was really cool. And uh I did, I won that I won that fight, uh uh second round knockout. Um, but it that was it was a funny fight. I, I was fighting this Thai kid and oh well, first I'll tell you a story how I got that this fight. <laughs> yeah. So I was in, I was in Phuket, um, and I was training and at Tiger Muay Thai. And then, uh, you know, my girlfriend at the time, my wife now was, was talking to the trainer and was like, yeah, he, he wants to fight. He wants to fight. And then some trainer. And then the, one of the trainers comes over and just kind of watches me hit pads for like a couple rounds. And he's like, Oh, you want to fight? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I want to fight. And he, and he goes, okay, you come here Friday night. You meet me here at 5, 5 p.m. Friday night, 5 p.m. I'm like, okay. Well, he first he's like, how much you weigh? And I'm like, uh, like 170 pounds, 75 yeah. pounds, something like that. So like, okay, Friday, Friday, 5 p.m. You come here. I'm like, okay. So then I just showed up. I showed up like at the gym at like Friday, at 5 p.m. He just he comes. He just shows up on his motorbike. He's like, let's go. And and I just jump on the back of this guy's motorbike. And he just starts driving me around Phuket. We just go to this like arena and he pulls up and he just points at this kid. He's like, you fight him. And like, I look at the, this kid looks like he must've been like, like 17 or 18 years old. Oh, and I, God. I probably had like, probably like, like 10, like 15 pounds on him. Like I was bigger than him. And I'm like, are you sure about like, like I'm bigger than this guy. He's like, no, he's good. He has, he has over 50 fights. He's, and he's this Thai kid, and and I'm like, I'm like, okay, and then we, so then I go out there, I warm up, and the one thing in Thailand is like, there's no like different dressing rooms. You're just warming up right in front of your opponent. So I remember just like see my my opponent just right there, like like warming up, and I'm just warming up, and I'm like, all right, all right, we're doing this. And then uh, we go out in round one. Uh, it's a good it's a good round one, you know. And all my other fights, you know, they call me the steamroller because you know I come out. And, and I go hard, you know, I just kind of, and up in the, till then, you know, I was undefeated. I'd just been, you know, running through guys. Um, but in, in Muay Thai, they want you to be more controlled. You know, the first round, you're not supposed to come out hard. You, you kind of come out there and trade kicks because that's when all the betting in Thailand, like the only legal betting you can do in Muay Thai is, or in Thailand is, is Muay Thai. So, so the betters go crazy in the first round. So it's like, it's, it's kind of, disrespectful if you come out there and you just go crazy first round so you, i come out the first round i'm doing my muay thai thing and it's like ding ding they play the music while you fight we're trading kicks and whatnot and then uh the guy ends up smashing my nose with an elbow and breaks my nose <laughs> in round one with this kid and then and then i remember in between rounds one and two i'm like my nose is bleeding and my nose is like killing me and then I'm just like, fuck this. And then in the round two, I just come out and just like throw like a like a one one two low kick and then a three. And I landed that that hook like right to his temple and just face planted him. And uh, and like I remember like doing like thinking that we we weren't getting out of there alive after that, you know. <laughs> but oh, uh, they are, nobody probably betted on you. Yeah, yeah. I mean. And then, but we ended up, they, they paid me my like 2000 bot and, uh, we got out of there. <laughs> what does that equate to in us dollars? 
It's like 60 bucks. Oh, God. <laughs> so wait, what are the, what are some lessons you learned in Thailand? Like being out there two months training all the time. What did you learn about yourself in that process? Just, I mean, I, I could adapt to anything, you know, I was, I'm, I was a wrestler at heart, you know, that's always my background, but I went in there, I threw myself in an uncomfortable situation to really learn, uh, you know, a, a different martial art in a different country. And, uh, you know, traveling alone was really cool because I had to figure everything out and, uh, and just hard work, you know, they, they train every day, twice a day. And it's no, it's such a, such a routine there. Uh, you know, you have to run, you know, they used to, I remember when I first showed up there, actually, uh, my, my suitcase didn't get there on time. So I didn't have my, my sneakers and I showed up and, uh, the first day and they're like, yes, everyone run, run, go run. And I'm like, Oh, my suitcase isn't here. I don't have my sneakers. And he goes, run, run. So they made, they made me run with my flip flops. He was like, no run, no run, no Muay Thai, no run, no Muay Thai. So I just had to run in my flip flops. <laughs> oh, and, my God. And, and it was just every day, you know, 8 a.m. is or you, you show up at 7.30 a.m. to run uh, class, you know, morning training starts at 8 a.m. and then you rest and then afternoon training starts at 3 p.m. And it was it was every day and, and uh, you know, I, no excuses out there and you know hard work and and it, you know it was great that's awesome that's such a crazy story i didn't even know that in my yeah, research, yeah. I, that didn't show up at all that's sick um so then you go back you go back after two months to the u.s yeah yeah and then so yeah i went back i was two and oh as a pro um and then i, I had a year actually where I had like like four or five fights fall out on me, you know. Like guys would pull out of fights, um, or guys would get hurt, or they just it was they were having like it was a hard time trying to get me a fight, you know, for the local promotions in Florida. So it went for a year. I had I had like four or five fights uh, get canceled on me, and like like I would say two or three of those fights were like the week of. So I had oh. sold all those tickets. I had everyone fly down to see me and then I had to tell everyone like, like my fight got canceled, which it, everyone goes through it, you know, coming up as a fighter, especially earlier in your career, you have to sell tickets. You have to, you know, cause that's all these promoters want you is to sell tickets really. So, and, uh, and then if, if, you know, if your fight gets canceled, you gotta go and get all the refunds for everyone. It's a, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah. I, so it was, but I was still training hard the whole year. And then I finally got a fight to stick and, uh, you know, I, I had my third fight and, uh, I won. It was a good fight. Um, then I had my fourth fight and, and I had a, a great, a great fight, like a really good finish, like a spinning back kick and then, and dropped them with it. And then like put him to sleep at the guillotine in like a minute. And, uh, and then I was four and oh. And uh, I got my first real big fight uh, was Titan FC uh, was a, it was, which is on UFC fight pass, which as a, as like a pro fighter, you, your first goal is to get on UFC fight pass. Cause if you get, if you, if you get a fight on UFC fight pass, whether it's Titan FC, whether it's CFFC, whether it's LFA, you know, if your fight is on fight pass, the right people are watching. So I was four and zero. I finally got a Titan FC fight on fight on UFC Fight Pass, and it was against uh, a real good guy. Uh, he was eight and one at the time, Brazilian guy, and he was like knocking everyone out. And uh, I and it was in Miami, which I was pumped about too. Um, Miami is always a good time. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. I went out there and, and had a great fight with this guy. And uh, in that fight, actually, I broke my hand and I broke my ankle in the first round of that fight. Did you keep fighting? So, yeah. <laughs> and how then do you fight I, with I, a broken ankle? Like, how do you dude, move? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't, like, pivot. I could still move, but I couldn't pivot or anything. And then my right hand was broken, so I, I was still throwing it. But it was like it, it, I was – I ended up winning the first two rounds. And I lost Wait, the third on, round, on. but 
What's going on in your mind? I just got, I'm sorry I got to interrupt, but what's going on in your mind? Are you there? You kind of cut out. What's going on in your mind when you're in on the, the biggest fight of your life, on UFC Fight Pass, your ankle and your wrist, your hand or your ankle? How, what are you, what's going through your mind in that moment? Well, I mean, I, I, it was my ankle. I threw a low kick and he just, he checked it perfectly. And I just remember throwing that low kick and I was just like, Oh fuck. Like, like that was painful. And, and then I'm, you know, I'm just moving and I just kind of stopped throwing low kicks after that. Um, and, and then my hand, I remember my hand just started killing me. Um, so, so I was like not throwing many right hands after that, but, uh, you know, in the fight, you just, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to, uh, to, to win, you know, to, to survive, you know, and, and I, I actually landed like a big left hook, um, that, that rocked them. And then I was, I was out pointing them. I was, I was, uh, I was landing and, uh, we ended up squeaking out that victory, you know, um, it was a, cl- it was a close fight for sure, but, uh, we got that win and, uh, that got me to uh five and oh, and actually that, that guy that I beat in that, that, uh, Titan FC fight, uh, his name's Hausch Manfio, and uh, he just won the PFL, the PFL tournament, though the PFL league, for a million dollars like a couple months ago. <laughs> wow! So it's that's like crazy. a serious win, like that win. Lo- that win looks re- real good now. <laughs> oh but it's crazy God. to think, like you know, just whenever, I, whenever I fight somebody, you know, it's kind of like you have like a weird connection with them afterwards um just for being in there with them and you know and uh i've i've always followed his career after that and uh you know i i made it to the ufc and he kind of he was like won a couple fights lost fights but then he just got into the pfl this season and and he was a huge underdog but i knew he was good and i was i'm always rooting for the guys you know i fight and uh he actually ended up he beat anthony pettis in that season um Holy and he fuck. and he uh he's he's a millionaire now like <laughs> which is is awesome you know he was a good guy he had a he had a family he's from brazil um so and he's the defending pfl champion now um but yeah so i was 5 and 0 after that fight and uh and my hand was broke my ankle was broke and i remember uh my ankle re rehab i had to get surgery on my ankle and they put like two pins in my ankle and uh and i was down in tampa and like the recovery was taking so long and i was i was like questioning if i was ever going to come back from that ankle injury and like that's when uh me and uh and my girlfriend at the time we moved back home to new york so i guess this was like five five or six years ago we moved back home to New York and I, I was still recovering from my ankle surgery, which was taking forever. I was like questioning if I could ever do this because my ankle and uh, I linked up with uh, my old, my old strength and conditioning guys. And they're, they're a bunch of uh, physical therapists there as well. They're, it's acceleration sports training. And uh, they helped me get healthy. They, they like, manually like grabbed my ankle and started like cracking it back and forth i could just hear the scar tissue breaking up in it and oh. and just just like like getting manual on it uh and helping me rehab it and and they they saved my career then and and then my ankle was good and i i linked up with longo again and i i linked up with everyone at sarah bjj sarah and i I told Longo that I'm living here now. I moved back. And I'm five and I'm pro and I want to, want to pursue, you know, I want to make it to the UFC. I want to be a champ. And he, he backed me. And, and, uh, and then uh, I actually signed a, uh, Ray got me a fight for ring of combat in Atlantic city, which is his promotion to real like proven ground in the Northeast. Um, I didn't know he had a promotion. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. And, That's crazy. Uh, it's I him. did not know that. Well, it's him and uh, Lou ne- Neglia. Lou Neglia is kind of the head guy, but Ray's the man, you know. Um, so I was pumped. I was tra- training for this fight for Ring of Combat. And then um, 
like right after like I, I was started training for that ring of combat, uh, a Royal called me who, who was also managing me at the time and, uh, and said that we got a contender series fight, Dana, Dana white contender series fight. Cause again, you know, I had that big win on fight pass. They must've seen it. I was five and oh, and, uh, it was season one of the contender series and, uh, and we got our shot. So I had that contender series fight and, uh, it was my first, my first full camp living up in New York, which was, you know, cool. My first time, like, like actually living there. Um, I trained hard, you know, and then I went into the contender series and got a big win and then six and oh, and, and Dana White signed me to the UFC that night. Okay. So back up the truck. You, your biggest fight of your life, your ankle and your hand break in the first round, and then you, you're in the middle of a fight, so it's kind of like you have to keep fighting or you're gonna get hurt. You keep going. What yeah. could be the worst night of your life, ending your career, ends up being the investment that paid off getting you your first UFC contract. Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, like all, all those fighters say, it's always the next fight's always the biggest fight, you know. So yeah, that that at the time that was that was the biggest fight, and uh, you know, I I had to fight through adversity in that fight, and then that that fight got us the contender series fight. So you you get into the UFC, you start off, you start off with a loss. Yeah, well, I gotta go back to the contender series uh, and tell you. Some, oh yeah, some yeah, yeah, go, <laughs> go, yeah, yeah. My bad. Uh, Hold on. So uh, this was season one of the contender series. So they had the Snoop cast. So I got to have Snoop Dogg commentate my fight, which was pretty sweet. And then, and then after the fight, after I got the win, my dad and my brother actually got to go into Snoop's trailer and uh, smoke a blunt with him. <laughs> You've told me this. Yeah, yeah. There's there's video evidence. <laughs> oh, you gotta send me that. All right, I will. Uh, it's, all... it's on my it's on my brother's Twitter. Actually, he pinned it at the top. <laughs> okay, because all these uh, all these like great stories you're telling are gonna be viral clips on TikTok most likely. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, Snoop Dogg, he he came after the fight. Like he he came up to me. He's like, "Yo, Steamroll, that was you know great fight, awesome." He's like, "You the Steamroller." I'm the weed roller. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and then I, I think I was, you know, I was on a high after the win. I was saying, just chilling with Snoop Dogg. And then I was turning, I'm chilling with uh, Uriah Faber and talking with him a little bit. And then I guess my dad goes up to Snoop Dogg and he goes, he's like, yo, Snoop, you know, it's, it's always been a bucket list of mine to like smoke some weed with you. So then Snoop's like, all right, all right, pops, let's go. And I don't even know where I am at, at this point, you know, but, but Snoop Dogg starts bringing my dad to the trailer and then my brother sees that. And I guess he, my brother starts chasing them to try to like go along. And then Snoop's like security comes up and like stops my brother. <laughs> my oh dad my goes, God. Hey Snoop, Hey Snoop, that's my son. Can you let him go? And then, and then they, they let him, they let him into the trailer. So my brother and my dad got to, uh, smoke a celebration blunt with uh with the man himself snoop doggy dog what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's the craziest story yeah it's funny oh my god so what are you feeling like all the ups and downs well we didn't night. have any down we didn't have any downs yet you know well, the, was... the, the the rehab process oh oh yeah yeah when i oh when i broke my ankle and and it was taking so long to come back i i thought i was done I literally like I was and, like, and I, what I did that feel like? It I was I was like, I was thinking I, I was gonna, you know, I was just thinking what I was gonna do. You know, I was, you know, I, I had a I have a criminology degree, I'm military police, uh, army reserves. So I was thinking about going, you know, trying to get into uh, NYPD or or uh, you know, apply to be try to be a cop or something. I was just thinking what I was going to do with my life now, you know, but, uh, I never, you know, I, I, I knew, I knew that I, I wasn't going to end like that. Cause you know, I was too good. I was too good. And I was, I, w I never wanted to have those regrets. You know, I never wanted to always be that, 
that like 50 year old man and think like what if you know uh, what if you know i wanted i want keep on you know thank god for acceleration sports training you know steve wilk john furia they they got me back to to healthy and, and i'm still training with them you know they've gotten me back from so many injuries um so it's like i wouldn't still be fighting if it wasn't for them this sport is is it's a toll on your body and, and you need to have good good people around you strength conditioning physical therapists you need to figure out what you need to do to keep yourself healthy and able to to train and compete and luckily I figure it out through acceleration sports training. They keep me healthy. I do a lot of hot yoga. Hot yoga keep, keeps me healthy. I swim a lot. Swimming keeps me healthy. Um, I would say those three things are the main things that keep me healthy. That's crazy. Man, I'm just – this whole that whole story is insane. So the uh, you get signed that night. You go into your first you first real UFC fight. Yep. Tell me how that night goes. Yeah. So I've never tasted defeat before. I was undefeated amateur, six and zero pro, and getting to the UFC at six and zero is a little early, you know. Um, and then I ended up fighting this uh, Mexican guy, uh, Polo Reyes, and he knocked me out in a minute, you know. I mean, it was a it was a flash knockout, you know. But I kind of went in there, just did what I've always done: went balls to the wall, went in there to steamroll him, and I got caught and I got finished. Um, and yeah, it was tough, you know. It was it was tough, but you know, I knew I knew that you know I've faced adversity in the past through injuries, through uh, you know fights getting canceled and whatnot. And I always know that, you know, you, you see what you're made of coming back from adversity. And that was my first fight in the UFC. You know, it was, it's time to see what I'm made of. You know, a loss, any kind of setbacks, you can either go one way or you can go the other way. And I was determined to, you know, just become better from that loss. And, you know, after, after that loss, I went on and had three great fights. Um, but, uh, Again, with that fight, uh, there's a there's a there's kind of a funny story with that fight. <laughs> well, it's not it's not really funny. It's um, kind of, but uh, so uh, he that guy who knocked me out actually tested positive for steroids like a week after we fought. So I remember finding that out and being like, "What the fuck?" Like like all right, I I called my manager. I was like. All right, send send me over his fifty grand bonus he got for knocking me out. You know, <laughs> take uh, that take that loss off my record. But then and then they my manager hit up the UFC he was trying to get it done, and then uh, the the UFC said that uh, they te- that since they tested him like the week after we fought. So because it was the week after we fought, nothing will change for the night for for my fight. And then I was like, all right, well, what were his results for the night of the fight? And then they said they didn't test them the night of the fight. So I was like, great. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and, and, you know, I learned from it and, and I got, I got better from it. And, uh, you know, after that first UFC fight, uh, you know, I came back and, and I, I started, you know, I got back to training you know, I, I learned a lot that you can't just go in there, balls to the wall, not think and, and just try to kill someone. You have to go out there and be more tactical, be more, you know, present and uh, and just, you know, be a, more of a calculated killer out there and, and set people up. And and uh, and after that fight, we got the biggest fight. We got to fight at Madison Square Garden after that fight against like a real skilled opponent, Lando Venata, mm-hmm. which was, you know, I, I've been, I remember watching Lando like before I was in the UFC and thinking that he was sick. And now, now, you know, I got to, I, I got, I got to fight Lando at uh, the most famous arena in the world, MSG. So it was, you know, it was sweet. Was that on the Connor Eddie card? Uh, no, it was on, uh, 
DC versus uh, Derek Lewis. Okay, that's a big fight. Yeah, yeah, it was it was on a pay per view card, and uh, you know, it was at Madison Square Garden. You know, I, I had so many people come out. It was I was coming off my first loss. You know, and uh, and I went out there and I had one of the, probably the best performance I've had to date. You know, it was a crazy fight. You know, he we came out round one. He dropped me in round one. I came back. I dropped him in round one. Back and forth round one. Um, you know, I ended up winning round one, and then he came out round two. He, he got he got me in round two, and then came out round. And then I remember, you know, in between rounds two and three, you know, uh, you know Ray Ray Arroyo, my coaches, they, my dad was actually in my corner for that one too, which was cool. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that after, but they're like, all right, you won round one, you lost round two, you know, you need this round. Let's go. You know, round, for fighters, we always say it's like round one goes to the most technical fighter. Round two goes to the best cardio fighter. Round three goes to the fighter who wants it the most, the fighter with the most heart. So I always guarantee, you know, I'll never lose round three. So I knew I knew I had to win round three and I went out there and, and I outworked them. And I won round three. So I remember at that fight finished. I was like, yeah, you know, we did it. I won. I won rounds one and three. You know, I beat them two rounds to one. And then, then they go to the judges scorecard. And it was actually a draw. Yeah. They announced it a draw. And it was a draw because all the judges said, I won round one. I won round, I won round one, 10-9. I won round three, 10-9. But they two of the judges said that he ten aided me in round two. Do you agree so, with that? Then, well, and then the third judge said that he beat me ten nine in round two. So so the one so two judges said it was a draw. One judge said I won. I won that fight. <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. I won that fight two rounds to one. They, he didn't ten eight me in round two, but it was a great fight, you know. Yeah. But it was a draw. And that's um, isn't that what it's about? Like the 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 win, the, lose, all that. It's like you put on a good performance the perf- for the fans. Yeah, yeah, the performance. It it really is, you know, but not in my pocketbook. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, I didn't yeah. I didn't I didn't get my win bonus. You know, I get paid to show up and I get paid to win. Right. And uh, you know, it it was a great fight. It really you know, le- legitimized myself in the UFC, you know, to go out to, there and and fight you know lando venata a guy who's who's fought tony ferguson who's fought you know a lot of the best guys and you know beat him um wow. yeah at at madison square garden coming off my first loss it was a it was a big moment for me uh and uh you know it, it was great and then you know after that fight i went off and rattled off rattled off two more big wins yeah which was great. But um, going back to that Madison Square Garden fight, um, I gave the dad the call, my call to be in the corner. You know, he's never been in my corner before. So I was like, MSG, you know, let's go. You're coming with me. So uh-huh. I had I had Longo, I had Arroyo, and then I had uh, my dad, the bulldozer, uh, Sal. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and his one job was – was to bring the ice, to bring the bucket and the ice. He forgot the ice. <laughs> so I always just bust his balls about that. But that's hilarious. He, he did he did a good job in the corner, besides the fact that he forgot the ice. Sarah would have <laughs> brought the ice, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um so yeah, you go rattle off two more wins. Now that had to be big for you. That was Jalen Turner and Louis Pena, right? Yeah, yeah. The next one was Jalen Turner. Um, but actually, you know, uh, at, before that Jalen Turner fight, I actually accepted a fight to fight uh, to fight this this Russian guy Magomed something in Russia. So I was I was like getting ready for that they, they offered me that fight and i was like all right let's do it this is my rocky story i love rocky you know uh, rocky four and, and there's this guy magomed like mustafaya's a uh, rushing guy now. uh yeah he, he's always been a real good fighter he hasn't fought in a while but he's good um uh-huh. but i accepted that fight to fight him 
in like Moscow, Russia. So I was like, I was like getting all pumped up, like fired up, getting my Rocky four story. And then, uh, and then like, like, like four weeks before, uh, the Atlanta pay-per-view, they, they hit me up and they're like, you want to take this Jalen Turner fight in Atlanta instead of Magomed in Russia? And then I was like, Oh, all right, we'll go, we'll go to Atlanta instead of Russia this time. Uh, so. <laughs> but I, I was, yeah, I was getting all ready to go to, to go to Russia, uh, which would have been cool. But I think, I think, you know, Atlanta was, Atlanta was great. And Jalen oh, yeah. Turner was, com- was coming off like a big knockout. Jalen Turner is a six, three lightweight. He's a big dude. Um, and, uh, you know, I went out there and uh, and got a big win in Atlanta, uh, which was great. You know, and uh, it was my first, you know, official UFC win. I had I, I had all my friends, all my family out there in Atlanta. We had a great time. Um, yeah, it was good. And that's kind of close to Florida. So did some Florida guys come out? Oh yeah, yeah, a bunch of bunch of Tampa guys were there. A bunch of New York guys were there um okay and then yeah yeah atlanta was fun atlanta was fun and uh then after atlanta we got uh we got a the fight in tampa we got the violent violent bob ross the ufc was going to tampa i was like i need to get on that card and uh we got uh luis pena uh in in tampa which was great you know it was at the amelie arena uh actually when i graduated from university of tampa our graduation was at MLA arena. So I was oh, back wow. in like, I was in that, that same place. I graduated from, from college. I spent, I was down in Tampa for like seven years. So it was like my second home there. And, and I got a huge UFC fight there against another, another real tough guy, you know, Luis Pena, another six, three lightweight, another huge giant lightweight. Um, and it was a crazy fight. You know, it was, again, it was, uh, it was, I guess what you, you say was similar to the, uh, Lando fight. Like I went out there and I won round one. I, it was a, it was a good round, but I went there and I, I got him in round one and then round two came and he hit me with this like crazy flying knee and I didn't drop from it, but like, it didn't look good. <laughs> like it was a big knee. Uh, and he won mm-hmm. round two. And then again, I was like, all right, I won round one. He won round two. You know, came it comes down to round three. Who wants it more? Who's got more heart? And I went out there and I outworked them and I won round three and I secured the win. So it was sweet. Fuck yeah. So that's a that's your second official win in the UFC. Yep, yep. I like and to that say was that was a while ago. Let me see. That was 2019. That was, right. And then you go through like I mean, I oh, remember yeah. you go through like three yeah, we got a lot. Nobody wants nobody wants to fight you, bro. That's my thing. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Like, well, that was like I guess that was like October of 2019, I think. And then, yeah. the, and then 2020 hits. You know, uh, fucking the coronavirus hits. So yeah, so uh, your yeah, fight so, gets can two fights canceled due to COVID. Yeah, well, well, I remember I I, I was supposed to fight in April of 2020. And I'm going through fight camp and then the whole coronavirus comes and everything starts shutting down while I'm in the middle of fight camp. And I'm like, like the gym shut down, everything shuts down. And I'm like training in like my garage, you know, training in my home gym, like running on my treadmill and like shadow boxing. And like, I'm like, like what's going on right now? And the world's like ending and I'm like training for a fight. So it was crazy. Uh, but eventually the, the UFC, well, the UFC was like the last sport. They were like, no, we're still going to have these fights. We're still going to have these fights. But I was like, I was like, I can't train. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, I was still doing what I had to do to prepare. But eventually the UFC shut down for a couple weeks. And uh, my fight in April got canceled. And then uh, once everybody started, you know, figuring sh- things out, um, you know, uh, the gym Longo was opening the gym for me to train and, uh, and I was able to start, you know, training again. And, uh, I want to say I was supposed to, I was, I got another fight in like June of 2020 yeah, June 20th. and I do. 
yeah, yeah. I do a whole fight camp. You know, I, I was, I was training at home and then I went down to Tampa because everything in Florida was open. Like Florida didn't care. It was great. I go down to Tampa and, uh, and do like a, like a, like a four or five week fight camp in Tampa. And then we show up to Vegas in June. I'm ready to go. I'm supposed to fight Frank Camacho. And, uh, and then my cornerman, Billy Q get test positive for COVID. So, so they pull me off the card. Billy Q still owes me like 50 grand for that as well. So I'll put that. <laughs> um, uh, so he test positive for COVID, which I mean, and, and they, they, the UFC didn't really know how to, uh, how to deal with it. So they just pulled me off the card, I guess. And me and Billy Q had to like drive from Vegas all the way back to Tampa. That was a, that was an interesting trip. You know, <laughs> Were you like pissed? I mean, I wasn't, I, it wasn't his fault, but right. yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, thanks a lot, dude. You know, <laughs> but we were just busting each other's balls the whole time. Uh, but he was like, he's like coughing all over the place and it, like thinking it's a joke. I'm like, yo, you you have like, you have COVID. And this is when COVID first like came out where we really didn't know that it was all bullshit, you know? So I was like, he's like coughing and stuff. And I'm like, yo, stop coughing. Like, like you, ha- you actually have COVID. It's not a joke anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh yeah, so that crazy. was the June, that was the June fight. And then I was supposed to have another fight in 2020. That, was, that would have been August. It was, it was Roberts. I was supposed to fight Roberts. And, and again, in 2020, you know, I have a great training camp and then my, it's my last sparring session, my last sparring session of camp. And it's the last round of my last sparring session of camp. And I throw a low kick and it just, it was just caught it weird. I was sparring a guy who was like, who's like six, five. Cause Roberts is like six, three. And, and it just, he turned his knee out weird. My, my foot hit his knee, knee weird. And I broke my foot. The last sparring session, the last round. It's horrible. You know, I, I never want to pull out of fights. It's like, I've, that's probably that's the only fight I've ever pulled out of, and I did everything I had could do, you know, and I, I ended up uh, going to Vegas early to try to like have the uh, UFC like uh, PT guys like shoot it with cortisone to try to make it so I could fight, but I got there and they like took an MRI on it and they're like your foot's broken, you're not fighting, and I was like no like shoot it with lidocaine. I was doing all the my my Google research to try to see what we could do but that fight fell through because i broke my foot so it was rough but damn but but then you know i recovered from that injury got back to training you know i knew my time was coming and uh we got a huge fight we got you know i got i finally got to got a fight in in fight island abu dhabi and i was fighting an undefeated fighter atman atman azaitar on a on a conor mcgregor pay-per-view so i was i was pumped i was pumped you know like to fight on a mcgregor pay-per-view in abu dhabi fight island that was that was that was the beginning of 2021 yeah that was the beginning of 2021 so yeah 2020 just sucked you know i had all those cancellations but i get this big fight in abu dhabi in 2021 beginning and uh yeah so you know we go out to abu dhabi it's great um and then i'm cutting weight like it's like the day of wayne the morning of wayne's and i wake up and and i'm i'm cutting weight like i've got like like three or four pounds to go and then my coach like a royal comes up to me and he's and he's like opman's out and i and i look at him like you're kidding right you know, I've had already had like like four fights canceled in 2020. I'm in Abu Dhabi. I'm cutting weight a day before the fight, and they tell me that my opponent is out of the fight. And I'm like, "What do you mean? What do you mean he's out of the fight?" And he and he tells me like like he broke COVID por- protocols. He tried to sneak a bag into the into the hotel. Like they, I guess he had like some guy start scaling uh, a balcony to like bring a bag to him which still nobody knows what was in the bag nobody knows uh 
what do you but think I, it was gear i have no clue man nobody knows but i mean you got to i mean it's probably like an iv you know you you probably having a tough weight cut you know I, nobody knows but you i mean the worst thing it could have been was an iv to hide his steroids but that was the worst thing it could have been i don't know okay. but but either way Dana White cuts him on the spot. I'm I've I've got three pounds to go. I'm like, so what are we doing? Arroyo tells me, he's like, listen, still, still cut the weight. Cut weight, go to weigh-ins, make weight. You know, you're gonna be an alternate. There's there's uh three other lightweight fights on the card. You know, you could be fighting Conor McGregor. <laughs> like Dustin Poirier could 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 not make could could uh fuck up his weight cut and then you could fill in and be fighting conor mcgregor i was like all right let's go oh my uh, god <laughs> so i still i still cut the weight and uh i make weight without an opponent and then uh you know the the toughest guy on the card i or the the toughest lightweight on the card that's the the least well known i knew him though armin armin uh Tarukian. Tarukian. Yeah, Sarukian. I knew Armin was tough. And Armin's opponent actually didn't show up to Wayans. So I was like, all right, you know, we're fighting Armin. Um, But a a story about Armin, I met Armin when I was in Thailand. I sparred Armin when I was in Thailand. No way. Yeah. And uh, it was before Armin was in the UFC. And uh, I was at Tiger Muay Thai and like they do just like open rounds of sparring. And uh, I was at, I was at Tiger and I, I wasn't in shape. Let's just say I wasn't in fight shape. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wasn't the steam roller. I was the cream roller. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I did, I did a round. With, uh, uh, I did a round with Armin and, uh, and it was a good round, um, but I did not win the round. <laughs> The one thing I remember about the round is that Armin hit me with the spinning back kick to my chest and I, it like knocked the wind out of me. I didn't go down, but it, I was like, holy shit, that was a hard kick. Oh, um, man. Cause and then after he hit me with that, I like looked him up. I like met him and, and I see like, I saw he's like a nasty fighter, like from like, like nasty fighter from over there. Um, and then he got signed to the UFC and I was always like, like, man, you know, I know that kid's good. I want to fight that guy when we're both in the top 10, you know, me and him fight when we're main events, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, fate had it differently. You know, I feel like they were testing me right there. You know, I, I like Armin got the better of me in that sparring round. And, and like out of all those lightweights on that card, I didn't want to fight Armin. I, I wanted to fight McGregor. I wanted to fight hooker. I wanted to fight, uh, who who are the other lightweights on the card? I, I don't remember, but there's uh oh Chandler. I wanted to fight Chandler was on the card. I wanted to fight Hooker. I wanted to fight Poirier. I wanted to fight McGregor. I didn't want to fight Armin, you know. Yeah. Uh, because nobody knows Armin, and he's just as good, if not better, than all those guys. Um, but they were, you know, I feel like the universe was testing me there. They were like, and then and then the UFC also said. You know, you don't have to take this fight. You could, you get your show and you get your win because of the bullshit that Ottman paid, pulled. They're like, we're going to pay you full. Uh, but, you know, Armin's opponent didn't show up. So if you want that fight, you can take it. They Even my, my manager told me that we shouldn't do it. He was like, listen, they're going to pay you. And then they'll rebook. And, and I remember I was, I was like thinking about it. I was like, and they're going to pay me my full fight, my full purse. I They'll just book me for another fight in a month. But then I was, I was like, no, you know, I didn't come all the way to Abu Dhabi to just get paid and not fight. I came here to test myself. You know, the, every, the universe is testing me right now. They, they, they knew that this is the guy you didn't want to fight. And, and now this is, you know, do you want to be a fighter? How bad do you want it? And, and I accepted the fight and uh, went out there and, and I, I had a great fight with him. You know, he was, he's a real tough kid. Um, I was, I was preparing the whole time for Ottman, who's a heavy boxer. And then, and then uh, Armin came in and he was shooting, he was shooting takedowns on me from my like first combo. 
which which threw me off a little bit and and he beat me he beat me but it was a great fight no i fought him hard it was an entertaining fight and and i i faced my fears i proved to myself that i'm a fighter in that one you know i really i really proved a lot to myself in that fight to step up and face armin in abu dhabi you know we were fighting on we fought at like 6 a.m abu dhabi time it was crazy because they were catering yeah. to like the North North American like time zone. So, you know, I, I got, you know, I fought them hard. I had no injuries. You know, in the end of the day, my stock went up. The UFC still paid me my win bonus, which was awesome. They paid me full. My stock went up. I fought hard. And, and Armin now is, is I want to say he's like 12 in the world. So I got to test myself against, you know, a number, number 12 in the world. Um, and it was, you know, at the end of the day, it was a great experience being out in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and you, I mean, I know you met Connor. That must have been Yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah. So. That's documented on socials. But, uh, like, I feel like, you, like you just said, now he's, like, he's ranked. Like, when you, that has to feel good for you, like, knowing how close you are. You felt, you felt that ranked opponent multiple yeah, and times. Can, and listen... I can beat him. I know I can beat him. You know, yeah. give me a full camp to prepare for him and I, I can beat him. And that like, that has to be the best you like just having that in your back pocket, knowing that that has to be. Yeah. Great. You know, and then in the next fight after Armin uh, beat me, he went out there and he knocked the next guy out in like the first round and looked like flawless. Um, and, you know, he's a good kid. He's young. He's super talented and, you know, I, I, I could see him being a champion one day and, and, you know, our rematch is going to be epic. Um, your last fight was against Terrence McKinney, another guy with an awesome story like yourself. You go out there again with an opponent you didn't train for. You're in Dubai. You, this was, this one wasn't in Dubai. Where was this one? Arizona. You're in Arizona. The guy lands a great shot. You're stopped in seven seconds. I want to know what's going through your head in that moment. Well, you know, it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good, but uh, but that's the that's the fight game, you know. Like that that's that that camp, you know. I did everything right that camp. I trained my ass off that camp. I was one hundred percent prepared for that fight. Um, but it, I was prepared for Frank Camacho. You know, he was an orthodox fighter. He was a righty. Um, I had, you know, I had, I was prepared for him. And then again, the week of the, f or like a week of the fight, a couple of, uh, uh, yeah, the week of the fight, Frank gets into a car accident. And, and again, you know, I, I, I do a, hu a whole fight camp to prepare for him. I'm a hundred percent prepared. I remember I found out when I was at the airport on my way to Arizona, you know, and then they, they throw Terrence, Terrence McKenna at me. I say, okay, let's do it. Terrence McKenna is a southpaw, a little lefty. Um, so, you know, I, I did all my sparring against a righty. And, uh, and then, you know, I, but I was ready. You know, I fought southpaws before. I know I, I love fighting southpaws. But, uh, you know, we went out there and, and, you know, he threw the best two punches of his life, you know. And good for him. Terrence seems like a good dude. You know, he's got a great story. You know, it sucks that he had to build his name off of knocking me out. But, uh, you know, good for him. But, you know, he threw the best two punches of his life. And uh, we're going to run that one back again. You know, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same in the same place. And, you know, the stars aligned for him that night. And he got a big win. He caught me. and. Uh, you know, good for him, but in the end of the day, I live to fight another day. You know, facts. I got, and that's what it's all about. You know, I I put in a great fight camp. I got a lot better that fight camp. I went out there that night. It didn't go my way. You know, but that's it. That's adversity. Losses happen. It's what you do after those losses. You know. Yeah. I lost that uh -huh. fight. I I remember. I mean, I remember thinking like. Dude, did that just happen? Like, is this? A, I thought it was a bad dream for a while, and I was like, "Shit, the, you know, that was real life." 
but uh and it was tough after that fight you know I, I questioned if i could ever do this again you know i was like do i belong in the ufc you know i went to work i went back to work with my dad you know i was i was oh, wow. telling ray like i went to i went to the construction i i was like you know, what am I doing? And, and, and then, you know, I work a couple of days of construction and I was like, man, I can't let it, I can't have it end like this. You know, there's still, there's more to this story. There's more to, you know, and, and I went back into the gym. I talked with Ray and Ray told me, you know, you know, man to man, face to face. He told me, you know, if I, if, he said, if I think you suck, I'd tell you to go work for your father. You don't suck. You can beat all these guys in the UFC get back to training and let's get back to work. That's what he said to me. And I said, all right, coach, let's go. And we, you know, we got back to training and, and I'm, I'm a hundred percent prepared right now. I got another fight. I got another huge fight on a big pay-per-view. Um, I'm on, you know, that, that Arizona fight was on a pay-per-view. I'm on another pay-per-view, you know, we're going to Cali. I never fought in Cali. So uh, I got another undefeated opponent. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm back, you know, I got knocked down, but I got back up and I'm a hundred percent prepared now and I'm better, I'm better off than, now than I was, you know, from, you know, having that happen. Now I'm a better fighter from it. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to go out there and just show the world that it doesn't matter if you get knocked down, it's about getting back up. It's about, you know, driving forward. It's about learning from your mistakes and coming back stronger. And, you know, that's what I'm going to show the world. Facts. And, you know, it's, I feel like there's the silver, the silver linings to me are so obvious in that story. It's like, first off, a couple of days after that fight, I remember you posted on Instagram, like something super, like, I'll be back, like something of that note where it's like, and just right away, it, there was no, like, it didn't, which I which I remember like vividly ingrained in my mind. And yeah. then the other thing is like you're coming off a Conor McGregor pay-per-view and you're coming off a viral moment at the end of the day. So you're a bigger fighter. You've proven to the UFC you're going to fight whenever you sign the contract. It's like I feel like your stock has still risen even after this point. And I feel like that's kind of your story is like when things Through the look adversity. Bad, yeah, through the adversity we rise. You yeah. know, and, and it's all you know, I I know what I'm capable of. I know I'm a I'm a skilled fighter. I know that I work hard and it's you know, it's gonna pay off. And and this this next fight, I'm gonna go out there and do my thing and uh and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great one. No doubt. I, I'm I'm certain of it. I like I'm gonna bet on you just because I know like I know this story this you've already you've already the story's already happened to you I feel like it is crazy and then then this guy I'm fighting too he's undefeated he's coming off the contender series I've been there and you know I I had a reality check when I was undefeated coming off the contender series I plan on doing the same thing to him so you know Let's go, baby. Let's do it. And one more week of hard training and then fight week. Crazy. So you're you excited for the fight? Yeah, man. You know, I've been I've been doing this for ten years now. You know, I, I work so you know, I've had I've had a great fight camp and uh I'm ready to go out there and, and and fight this guy, leave everything I have in that octagon and uh you know, get my hand raised and celebrate with my friends and my family. And, uh, you know, and then kind of, you know, take, take like a couple of weeks, relax a little, eat, eat, eat some good food and then get back to it. You know, <laughs> this is the fight life. You know, we train hard we have a fight camp. We go out there, we fight hard and then we relax and then we get back to it. You know, facts. Well, I'm excited. I hope, uh, I hope after you win, uh, you you'll come back and we'll talk about how it feels at some point. But uh, 